Thank you so much. I don't know if you need an introduction, but he's my best friend, and he mentored me and has changed probably hundreds of lives of different teenagers and youth around the world, and he doesn't even know it. So, without further ado, Joe Franco. Thank you. Um, Lord, put, press something on my heart today. Uh, today, uh, we, we went hiking, and it was fun because we, we, we live in South Florida. There's no hills. There's no hills. Uh, I ride a bike to work, and it's a straightaway all the way. I hit a hill that goes about two inches higher than what was behind you because you're passing over a canal. That's about it. And um, so walking up the hills was a lot of fun walking in. And we get to the top of this hill, and we saw Mount Rainier right there in the background. That was so cool. That was just so cool seeing the mountain. And, and Gerald started quoting Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up into the hill from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now that scripture, um, when I first got saved, I pictured that as... All right, we're surrounded by the enemy, but over the hill, here comes the cavalry. But I found out later on that's not exactly what the psalmist meant when he wrote this. You see, if you've ever been to Jerusalem, I have been to, to Jerusalem. Okay, we only have a couple, two or three people here. When, if you've ever been to Jerusalem, Jerusalem sort of sits in a bowl, in a basin, and around it are hills. And back then when the psalmist wrote this, I believe it's David who wrote this psalm, when the psalmist wrote this, in those days, in the hills was where there were the high places, where they would have sacrifices to Moloch and to Asherah and all the other false gods. And at night, you'd be in your home and you look up to the hills and you see these fires and usually they were sacrificing children or sacrificing animals, but they were doing pagan rituals around these fires to their false gods. And when the psalmist wrote it, he said, I lift up my eyes to the hills, and he sees all these fires going on. And he says, well, where's my help going to come from? Because these guys are seeking their help from these demonic forces. And then he says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And when you think of that, ooh, I get chills when I just think the maker of heaven and earth, he's our help. Yes, they're up in those hills, and they're lighting their fires, and today their fires might be some pot, or their fires might be crystal meth, or their fires might be other types of drugs. And they're seeking a God that is dead. They're seeking a God that doesn't even exist. They're seeking a God to fill that God-shaped hole in their heart. They look to the, they go to the hills to get away and to try to find something. But where does our help from come? Our help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. People aren't here because they're caught in their strongholds. They're caught up in this area. I don't know the area, but they're caught up in their strongholds. And when we look at these hills, we're like, what's going on out there? We don't have to worry about what's going on. We have to worry about pleasing the maker of heaven and earth. So tonight, I want us to pray and believe God to break the strongholds on all these people who should be here tonight and didn't come. They might have had some legitimate excuses. They might have had really poor excuses. It doesn't matter what the excuse was. Something has stopped people from coming out, but that's okay. Because we serve a God, the maker of heaven and earth. And according to my Bible on the last page, it says, we win. Yeah. And we don't win because we're great, we're wonderful, and we're powerful. Michelle says I'm a great, wonderful husband. Eh, maybe I am. I'm, I'm, I'm fabulously handsome. That is definitely <laughs> true. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I love when preachers say, turn to your neighbor and say something. Turn to your neighbor and say, I wish I was as good looking as Joe Franco. But... <laughs> But seriously, there are strongholds in people's lives, and it's only going to be broken through through power of prayer. Church, it's your job to get on the phone, call them up, invite them out. And if they're not going to come, go to their house and get them 
and preach the gospel. This week we had the wonderful opportunity. Two friends of mine were healed. One from cancer, you, one from brain damage. Thank you, Jesus. He was, he was, the doctor said he was going to die. And God reversed it. It was from a simple prayer. We just, I just went to the hospital, prayed with him. He's supposed to be getting out in a couple of days to go to rehab to learn how to walk again and learn how to talk again, but he's healed. Another friend of mine had cancer. The doctors were moments before they were going to cut his foot open to, for this cancer. And the oncologist says, you know, we should hold off. I don't know why, but this, we got to check this out further. So they go to another hospital, a better hospital. They did all these tests, came back all cancer-free. It went from a tumor and cancer without your whole you, body Jesus. to... It's a little cyst, we'll take it out. Thank you, Jesus. That's our God. Hallelujah. That's the mighty God. I look in my eyes to the hills, but when it comes my help, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell the people you don't even know. Yeshua is the way. Jesus is the way. And we've got him here. Come on out. Hear the concert. Hear this bold preacher from Florida. He's going to share some silly stuff, but God's going to touch your lives. And the most important thing we can share with people, share your story, how he set you free, how he pulled you out of that miry clay, and he set your feet upon that rock, and that rock is Messiah, and he established your going. Share with people what he's done for you, and watch him change people's lives. Yes, Lord.